Hi, uh, welcome to our uh, Pharma Topics channel. Uh, it is a series of videos uh, related to the 8th semester uh, computer aided uh, drug design. And this uh, first video is uh, related to the unit 1. Uh, it has subdivisions, uh, the stages of uh, drug discovery. It is the introduction to drug discovery and development. Let us see what is this, what are the important questions which can be useful for your exam point of view. First, they may ask what is CAD? It is computer aided drug design. And the next question is uh, what are the various stages involved in drug discovery? Uh, there are different stages uh, such as uh, identification of uh, druggable candidates, their synthesis, characterization, screening, and appropriate assays uh, to measure their therapeutic efficacy. Then it includes uh, preclinical studies, which may be in uh, cell line studies or uh, through the isolated tissue experiments or in the in vivo models, uh, that is in the animal models, followed by clinical trials for successful candidates. The next question is uh, discuss the various stages of uh, drug discovery and development. Uh, you can remember the seven stages. One is target identification, that is, uh, which protein uh, is getting disturbed in a particular disease. And uh, you can validate that uh, target whether the uh, particular protein is involved in this uh, disease by inhibiting that protein whether the disease gets modified. Then identification of leads, optimization of leads, preclinical development, and clinical stage of drug discovery and new drug approval. So, this schematic diagram also you can present in the examination point of view. Next is uh, uh, the various stages of uh, drug development uh, you can add some more points in it it includes uh, lead optimization quantitative structural activity relationships virtual screening techniques molecular docking screening of uh, various databases such as uh, absorption distribution metabolism elimination toxicity that is admet chemical biochemical and pharmaceutical databases or drug databases and molecular modeling the next question is uh, what is drug design drug design is an integrated approach which, which involves chemical synthesis evaluation of the pharmacological and toxicological activities biotransformation or study of the metabolites and it also includes chemical and biological assays formulation and biopharmaceutics uh, enlist any four drugs uh, which are developed using computer aided drug design uh, the most important drug which was discovered through the computer aided drug design it was antihypertensive drug captopril uh, angiotensin uh, converting enzyme inhibitors are are very widely used it reduces the cardiac mortality also next is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor dorsolamide which is used for treatment of glaucoma an anti hiv drug indinavir anti platelet drug tyrofepan uh, what is meant by a target? Actually, the drug targets include enzymes, receptors, drug transporters, and ion channels. 70% of the drugs which are available in the market are enzyme inhibitors, and the rest are they may target receptors, drug transporters, or ion channels. The next stage in uh, this uh, first unit is uh, lead discovery and analog based uh, drug design, which involves uh, subdivisions. Uh, such as uh, rational approaches to lead discovery based on traditional medicine, random screening, non random screening, serendipitous drug discovery, lead discovery based on drug metabolism, and lead discovery based on clinical observation. Let us see what it is. First, what is a lead? It is a, compo it is a compound uh, from a series of compounds that possess a desired uh, biological activity, the characteristics of which could be modified to produce a new molecule with the desired druggable property. So it is not a drug. So whenever it is approved by FDA, then only it is called a drug. Otherwise, it is called a lead. The lead is having the ability to become a drug. The stages involved in identification of lead molecule. It includes a random screening from a small molecular library databases, traditional methods, rational drug design uh, through validation of biological targets or it may be through serendipity also 
So what is lead optimization? It is the process of chemical modification of lead molecules and their subsequent characterization in order to obtain drug like compounds. The developed leads are characterized by in vitro and in vivo biological activities, their physiochemical properties, pharmacokinetic and toxicological properties. The next question is uh, mention any two lead optimization techniques. The lead optimization includes a selection of ligand libraries, libraries, then making chemical modifications in them to characterize them with uh, suitable uh, properties to become a drug. Lead optimization includes identification of the uh, pharmacophores, optimization of functional groups, structural activity relationship studies, and homologation. What is a serendipitous drug discovery? It is also called a lead discovery without a lead. That is, finding something new while looking for something else is called serendipity. So it may be called as accidental or unexpected drug discovery, uh, which is called as serendipitous drug discovery. There are several examples uh, uh, in this uh, serendipitous drug discovery. Penicillin was uh, discovered by Sir Alexander Fleming. Actually, he was having a Staphylococcus culture when he left it in the lab, it got contaminated and he found some zone of inhibition which was infected with the mold. Then he identified the molecule in it. He named it as penicillin. Warfarin discovery. Uh, they have identified some of the cattle which, which fed on uh, the clover hay. They got uh, bleeding problems and they identified the molecule responsible for this is warfarin. Then nitrous oxide discovery as an anesthetic has been identified from the nitrogen fillings which release the nitrous oxide. Cisplatin discovery. Actually, the scientists were studying the effects of electrical field on E. coli growth. That inhibited it. Uh, that is killed the cells of E. coli. Then they identified cisplatin. Similarly, there were several discoveries and some of them are saccharin discovery and lithium discovery. So these are examples for serendipitous drug discovery. Next is elaborate on random screening for drug discovery. So they may ask what is random screening or well, write a note on it. So random screening includes screening of all new chemical entities obtained from natural source or synthetic chemical libraries for multiple targets. This method requires huge cost and time, but new structures with unexpected and unknown activity could be explored. The random screening involves screening of all the compounds in the bioassay even though they are structurally dissimilar. This type of screening is applicable when the receptor is unknown and the availability of high throughput screening large ligand libraries could be screened in this manner. Examples of drugs discovered through random screening are streptomycin, tetracyclines. Next is non-random screening. This is a method of screening. You may call it a systematic screening or targeted or focused screening. It's a narrow approach. This type of screening is applicable to compounds which are uncovered in random screening. The molecules with the structural similarity are screened for the target which increases the chances for the development of successful drug-like molecules. The next question is drug discovery through metabolism studies. Examples, sulindac sulfide is the active metabolite of sulindac which exhibits anti-inflammatory activity. When they studied the metabolites, they identified this. Terfenadine, uh, it is uh, antihistamine, was found to be cardiotoxic when its metabolism is inhibited by certain antifungal drugs. But Fexofenidine is a metabolite of terfenidine, which is a safer drug. It does not exhibit drug interactions. So terfenidine has gone out of the market and fexofenidine is available in the market. Cetrizine is a metabolite of hydroxyzine. Hydroxyzine is highly sedative, whereas cetrizine is less sedative when compared to hydroxyzine. It was discovered from the metabolism studies. Oxazepam is the metabolite of diazepam. It is short acting. Benzodiazepine. Next is a drug discovery through clinical observations. Sulfa drug sulfa thiazole used specifically for treating typhoid lowered the blood glucose drastically. 
This led to the development of sulfonyl ureas as oral hypoglycemic agents. Sildenafil is actually designed as an anti-anginal drug that possesses the adverse effect as penile erection. This led to the relaunch of the drug in treatment of erectile dysfunction which was a blockbuster drug Viagra. Clonidine was discovered as a nasal decongestant. The adverse effect of it is sedation and lowering of blood pressure. Further studies on it led to the development of this drug as an antihypertensive drug. The antihistamine diamond hydrinate was found to be effective in treatment of motion sickness based on the clinical observations. So that is, a, it is an anti-emetic drug. Bupropion was developed as an antidepressant was found to be affecting in cessation of smoking. So these are some of the examples of a drug discovery through clinical observations. Then uh, what is a lead discovery through traditional medicine or natural product research? Uh, there are many traditional products which are unexplored. They lack the scientific doc documentation to become a drug. Cinchona officinalis bark or the Peruvian bark, it was traditionally used for the treatment of fevers. That led to the development of quinine as an anti-malarial drug. Artemisia annuata or sweet warm wood, it's a Chinese traditional medicine used for treatment of fevers. This led to the development of artemisinin as an anti-malarial drug. Ammi visnaga, which was used as a bronchodilator in the western countries, led to the discovery of sodium chromoglycate, a mast cell stabilizer. Pepavarin, used as a smooth muscle relaxant, was found to be a lead molecule for development of verapamil, a calcium channel blocker. Galagin was isolated from Galaga officinalis, was an ethnomedicine for treatment of diabetes mellitus. Galagin was found to be the lead molecule for the development of the blockbuster molecule metformin, a widely used oral hypoglycemic agent. Bothrops jaraca, a Brazilian pit viper, is a venomous snake which contains teprotide, a non-peptide. Non teprotide was found to be uh, a lead molecule for development of ACE inhibitor captopril that was identified through computer aided drug design. Explain the various approaches, rational approaches to lead discovery. Rational drug discovery involves three steps. First step is identification of receptor or the enzyme targets which is related to a particular disease. Then step two, structural and functional characterization of the identified target protein. Then step three is designing a molecule that can bind to the target which was identified and elicit a pharmacological activity. So, rational drug discovery includes development of conformationally bioactive skeleton having 3D structure which has a complementarity to the target. It involves validation of the selective target by cell-based assays and development of suitable drugs. The drugs may be agonist or antagonist based on their activity of the endogenous compounds of on the identified target. Examples of rational drug discovery include development of H2, antagonist simetidine, ranitidine, selective, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors developed as antidepressants, ACE inhibitors, HIV protease inhibitors and HMG-CoA inhibitors that is statins developed as antihyperlipidemics. Then the next section in the unit 1 is analog based uh, drug design which includes bioisosterism, classification of bioisosters and uh, they, they ask some of the examples or case studies for analog based drug design. So what are analogs? Analogs are optimized lead compounds with similar chemical and or pharmacological features. It is of two types structural analogs which have same chemical structures. Pharmacological analogs, they don't have similar structure but they have similar pharmacological activity. So what are the objectives of analog based uh, drug design? Analog based drug design modifies the chemical structure of the lead compound having desirable pharmacological property with minimizing the adverse effects and enhancing the drug likeness features such as it may be a physicochemical property that could result in a better therapeutic agent. Analogs in pharmacological study design 
aims to understand the biological or pathophysiological phenomenon of a disease. The objectives of analog based drug design are achievable through bioisosterism. What are isosteres? Isosteres are defined as those compounds or functional groups of atoms that have same number and arrangement of electrons. Then what is bioisosterism? Bioisosteres are the compounds or groups that possess nearly equal molecular shape, molecular volume, having approximately same electronic distribution, which exhibit the similar physical properties such as hydrophobicity and having similar physical and chemical properties, eliciting a similar pharmacological effect. So the applications of bioisosterism. The purpose of bioisosterism is to enhance the desired biological or physical properties of a compound without making significant changes in the chemical structure to reduce the toxicity, to modify the activity to, and to alter the metabolism of the lead compound. In drug design, what is the purpose of bioisosterism? They enhance the biological or physical properties of the lead compound reduce or attenuate the toxicity and modify the activity of the lead compound. The next question is uh, classify bioisosterism with uh, approach with uh, examples. The first category is classical bioisosteres, monovalent, divalent, trivalent, tetravalent atoms or groups and ring equivalents. You may see the examples monovalent uh, bioisosteres, fluorine uh, can be substituted with hydrogen or hydrogen can be substituted with fluorine hydroxyl group can be substituted with nh sh thiol group can be substituted with oh chlorine can be substituted with bromine they may have uh, similar electronic uh, features that is the arrangement of electrons in the outer shell their valency is similar then divalent uh, bioisosteres c double bond s c double bond o c double bond nh c double bond c these could be exchanged to enhance the druggable properties or increase the druggable properties of the lead compound. Tetravalent bioisosteres that is uh, quaternary nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus, arsenium, then uh, trivalent it is uh, CH, uh, N, phosphorus and arsenic. Ring equivalence, benzene can be substituted with uh, thiophene or uh, purine or uh, puron they they are all called bioisosteres the next is uh, non classical bioisosteres uh, there are carboxyl bioisosteres hydroxyl bioisosteres amide bioisosteres halogen iso uh, bioisosteres and retroisosterism actually the retroisosterism does not obey the electronic and uh, steric definitions so these are some of the examples which can be used as bioisosteres exchangeable. The next is cyclic uh, bioisosteres that is estradiol which could be substituted with non-cyclic that is diethyl stilbosterol. The next question is what is Allen's uh, molecular number concept of bioisosterism? Allen scientist, uh, he found out that two molecules with the same molecular number could be possible iso bioisosteres. Example NH4, the molecular number is 11 and sodium, the molecular number is 11. So he said uh, NH4 could be the bioisosteer for sodium. Next is Grimm's hydride displacement law related to bioisosteerism. Actually, the Grimm's law it says addition of hydrogen to the atom confers on and aggregate the properties of the atom. Of the next highest atomic number. So, please, carbon, the next atomic uh, atom which is present in the periodic table is nitrogen. So, that you can add one hydrogen in the carbon. The next atom uh, to in the periodic table is oxygen. So, you can add CH2. N could be added with H. It goes, it progresses in this way. Addition of hydrogen descending diagonally from left to right. In the second group elements of the periodic table produces bioisosteres. But there are some limitations for the Grimm's hydride displacement law. OH and NH2 behaves as bioisosteres, whereas CH3 does not. 
uh, because of the different uh, physico chemical characteristics uh, such as electronegativity polarizability bond angles molecular orbitals the next is erlen meyer isosterism concept it is based on the peripheral electrons which are present for example nitrogen phosphorus uh, sulfur uh, antimony they can be bioisosteres phosphorus arsenic antimony can be isosteres uh, sulfur selenium uh, terithalium they can be isosteres so this concept was introduced by erlen meyer the next is uh, case studies on bio isosterism so you can see from this uh, structure it is uh, uh, when the r r1 is ch3 it is tol butamide its half life is 5.7 hours but when it was replaced with a bio isoster chlorine then the half life becomes very longer it becomes a long acting drug this is one of the classical example of bio isosterism replacement next is toleristat and oxo toleristat you may identify this if the uh, sulfur group is uh, replaced with oxygen in this case then the uh, toleristat becomes oxo toleristat that is x if it is sulfur then the in vitro activity that is aldose reductase inhibition of toleristat is 94 and it in vivo inhibition is 53 whereas if it is substituted with oxygen it reduces the in vitro activity reduces and the in vivo activity of aldose reductase inhibition slightly increases so it's the short nutshell information of unit 1 which could be very useful for your exam point of view i hope it will be useful for you thank you for listening happy learning kindly go through all the series which is available in this uh, uh, playlist uh, that is uh, computer aided uh, drug design even all the study materials are available in amazon platform also uh, the book is available it is costing very less if you are interested you can go for it thank you for listening kindly go through other chapters also which is available in this channel pharma topics channel if you like this video kindly press the like button uh, kindly subscribe to our pharma topics channel kindly share this video to uh, your friends such that they can also utilize this resource thank you for listening happy learning